so now we need to deal with uh, how do you deal with exponents when you're when you're talking about i. So we're going to talk about something called the cycle of i and figure out how do exponents affect i. So we're going to go through and we're just going to look at the definition of i. We said way back a few videos ago that i is the same thing as the square root of negative 1. So if I say, let's do the square root of negative 1, or let's do i squared, what I'm really saying is let's do the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Well, the square root of negative 1 times itself is just one, uh, the negative 1, right? The square root of something times itself is really just squaring negative 1. When I square a square root, they cancel each other out. So when I square i, I'm really getting just negative 1 out of it. Okay? So let's try that another step. If I do i cubed, that's the same thing as i squared times i. Okay? So what I did was I split it up. I said i to the third. I can break that up into two pieces. This is i to the second. This is i to the first. All three i's are still accounted for, but now I'm doing it uh, in two pieces. And the reason that I'm doing it in two pieces is because I have right up here, well, here's what i squared means. i squared, we just said right here, that's the same thing as negative 1. So i squared is negative 1. I can replace this i squared with a negative 1. And I'm going to leave that i alone because this one's just the square root of negative 1. So I'm going to say negative 1i. I'm going to write that a little bit more simply and just call it negative i. Okay? So I can say that this i to the third is the same thing as negative i. Notice it's an i, no more exponent. That's a little bit simpler to write. Okay? Let's talk about one more. If I talk about i to the fourth, i to the fourth is the same thing as i squared times i squared. Because remember, I have four i's. This is two and two. That makes four. So I can say i squared times i squared. Well, again, I have a definition for i squared. We figured that out already. It's negative one. So this is really negative one times negative 1, which is positive 1. So I can say that i to the fourth is the same thing as positive 1. So if you notice, I have really just four values here. I have i, okay? I have negative 1, negative i, and positive 1. None of those have any exponents attached to them. I was able to simplify anything here that had an exponent already into something that does not, either i, negative 1, negative i, or positive 1. Okay, So let's go a little bit further and let's let's continue the cycle. Let's go to the i to the 5th. Okay, So I'm missing a couple here. My i to the 7th up there is supposed to be an i to the 5th. So let's fix that. This is i to the 5th. Okay, So let's go one more step and let's say what's i to the 5th. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well i to the 5th, well that's the same thing as i to the 4th times i. Well i to the 4th, we just saw down here, well that's just really 1. So this is 1 times i. And 1 times i is just i again. This is 1. We don't need to worry about multiplying by 1. Okay? i to the 6th, again, I can keep doing this forever. i to the 6th is the same as i to the 4th times i to the 2nd. Okay? Well, i to the 4th is 1, so this one kind of is 1 times. And then i to the 2nd, we have over here, i to the 2nd is the same as negative 1. So this really says 1 times negative 1. Well, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Okay, let's do it one more time. i to the 7th. i to the 7th is the same as i to the 4th times i to the third. Well, i to the fourth is still 1. And i to the fourth is negative i. So this is 1 times negative i. Oh, look at that, negative i. Okay. And then the last one, i to the eighth. That's i to the fourth times i to the fourth. Well, i to the fourth times i to the fourth is 1 times 1. 1 times 1 is 1 again. Okay. So I can say that the cycle that I started with, which was i, negative 1, negative i, positive 1, it just repeated itself again. i, negative 1, negative i, and positive 1. So if you notice, this cycle is just going to repeat. If I go to i to the 9th, it's going to go back up to the top. So this is i to the 9th, i to the 10th, i to the 11th, i to the 12th, 13, 14, 15, 16. And it's just going to keep cycling through these four values. So, what, um, so here's the way we can figure this out. We need to figure out, well, how can I just simplify any of these exponent problems, right? I went through i to the second all the way up to i to the eighth, and when I did that, every single time, I ended up with no more exponent, right? So in this problem, I had i to the second, no more exponent. i to the third, no more exponent. i to the seventh, I was able to turn it into negative i, no more exponent. i to the eighth, no more exponent, right? So anytime we try, uh, to simplify something that has an exponent, we can always simplify it into something that no longer has an exponent. So here's a general rule for you. 
Okay, no complex numbers or no imaginary numbers with i okay, should have an exponent. Oop, let me write that correctly. Have an exponent. Okay, because anytime they do. I can simplify it into something that does not have an exponent. And actually, I can be a little bit more specific and say, I can simplify it into something that is either i, negative 1, negative i, or positive 1. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of examples of things, and we're going to try to simplify them using this cycle. Okay, so here's your, your problems, i to the 50th. We're going to say every exponent that is a multiple of 4 is really going to turn into 1. So take a look at this. i to the 4th turn into 1. i to the 8th? also turn into 1. If I had another column here, I would have uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 is also a multiple of 4. That would be 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and say, okay, i to the 50th, what is the closest, or not even the closest, what is any close multiple of 4 that is near i to the 50th, near 50? Well, I could say 48, that's pretty near 50. 48 is 4 times 12. So if I said I, 48, i to the 48th, <coughs> That's a multiple of 4, so that's equal to 1. And if I continue my process, that would mean i to the 49th. Let me go back really quick and show you the list. i to the 48th is here. i to the 49th is going to go back to the top. And that means i to the 50th is going to be the same as this one. It's going to be the same as negative 1. So I can go through the cycle starting at a multiple of 4 and say this is going to be i to the 50th. Okay? So 48th is equal to negative 1. Okay? Let me do this in a more organized way for you. Okay? We're going to say i to the 48th is the same as 1. And then I can go back to the top of the list and say i to the 49th. That's the same as then i, because that's the top of the list again. That means i to the 50th is going to be the same as negative 1. Right? That's the same as the second row of my cycle. Okay? And I can do this for any of these problems. All of these problems have exponents. And I can do this with any of these problems. Right? So for the second problem, on the right here, <clears throat> the only thing I have to do first is say, let me simplify my exponents just like you would with regular exponent rules. So if I said this was x to the third and x to the tenth, I could say, because they're being multiplied and they're both i's, I can add the exponents. So before I get started, I'm going to turn this into 3i to the thirteenth. Okay? And then I'm going to say, oh, i to the thirteenth, let me think. i to the twelfth, well, that would be the same thing as positive 1, because that's one of those multiples of 4 that are always going to turn into 1. The next thing on the list, if I, I'm at the bottom of the list when I'm at, um, remember, if we, uh, we said all the i to the fourths are going to be 1, all the i to the thirds are going to be negative i, okay? all of the i to the seconds are going to be negative 1, and all the i to the first, we're just going to leave anything like that as just i. So I was here, right? all the multiples of 4 are here. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the list and say, okay, well, i to the 13th. That's the next thing on the list. Back to the beginning. So we're going to kind of come down this row and then come down this row, <clears throat> which I'm actually going to take the second row to make ourselves our lives a little easier. I'm going to take this little row and I'm going to move it down here, okay, so we can see it. So I was at the bottom of the list. I was at i to the 4th. I'm going to go back to the top. That's 13, 14, 15, 16, and I could keep going. So i to the 13th is the same as i. So I don't need to write i to the 13th. I can say this is the same as 3i. And that's finished. That's as simple as I can make that. Okay. So let's do two more. Uh, 2i to the fourth is being squared. Well, the rule, the exponent rule said square both parts. So I'm going to say 2 squared is 4. When I try to square the i, I need to multiply together the exponents. So this is going to become i to the eighth power. And again, i to the eighth power, 8 is a multiple of 4. So that's kind of like this one at the bottom. So i to the eighth is really 1. This is saying 4 times 1. So 2i to the fourth squared is the same thing as just regular old 4. No more i anymore, not even no more exponent, no more i. It's completely gone. Okay, So let's do one more. So in this problem, we have 6 tenths. 6 tenths is a fraction that simplifies into 3 fifths. Okay, And the rule when you're dividing with exponents is subtract the exponents and put the answer on the top of the fraction. So I'm going to say i to the 10 minus 4 would be 6. So I'm going to look at this and say, okay, i to the 6th, well, the closest, easiest one would probably be i to the 4th. Here's i to the 4th. That means that I go back to the top of the list. i to the 5th is here. i to the 6th is the same as i squared, and that's negative 1. So this is really, i to the 6th is really the same thing as 3 times negative 1 over 5. Well, that's just really negative 3 fifths. Okay? So here's the big idea. Every single i problem that you do that has an exponent 
can be simplified into one of these four things. I, negative 1, negative I, or positive 1. And the way you're going to figure that out is to go to the nearest power of 4, okay? because all of the powers of 4 are going to be equal to 1. And then you can kind of just move yourself to where you need to be. Like if I was at I to the 35th, I would say 35 is really close to 36. This is I to the 36th, because that's a multiple of 4. That means I to the 35th would have to be the one right before that, and I could simplify it. And that's what we're going to do for any of these problems. None of your exponent, none of your i's should have an exponent attached to them, because we can write them much more simply.